Boredom is repetition. Design your presentation slides so that they're less repetitive to make them less boring by injecting novelty. <sighs> Here is a loose interpretation of the science. So pretend this is the inside of your brain. It's at rest right now. But if I show you any visual stimuli, like I don't know, a duck, then the network in your brain associated with duck stuff lights up. But if I keep repeating the same stimuli over and over again, eventually you get kind of like less responsive to ducks. Now, if I show you something very different from a duck, like a Rubik's cube, you're like, well, a Rubik's cube. You kind of feel like you're switching modes a little bit. Your brain gets responsive again. Repetition bores you, novelty wakes you back up, but that novelty is relative. Notice what this feels like when you watch presentations. So here are two presentation slides, a boring gray slide and an exciting pink slide. And you might think, oh, the pink slide's always going to be more exciting because it's bright pink. But that's not true. I can make this pink slide boring to you by repeating it over and over again. Ready? Notice when you feel bored. I can wake you back up if I do this. And you're like, whoa, gray slide, cool. The gray slide is suddenly more interesting because it's novel. This repetition effect is why templates can be really, really dangerous to use in your presentations because templates build in repetition and boredom is repetition. This even applies to really pretty presentation templates because even though a really pretty presentation template feels the same amount of repetitive as like stock photos of scientists, it's actually not. It's much more repetitive. If you break this template and these images down into their underlying shapes, you can see in the templates on the top row, it's all the same shape basically repeated. But in the bottom row with the images, the shapes underlying the images vary a lot more. Templates also build in repetition to the color scheme. The template repeats the same colors over and over again. And these images in the bottom row, even though they feel really similar in color, actually do vary a lot in their color scheme. A bad image is more engaging than a good template. But if you try to take a good image like this and wrap it in a template, you're kind of diluting the inherent variation in the image by wrapping it in this like same repetitive package. Nearly always full screen your images. But even good images can get repetitive, like you're probably already tired of these scientific stock photos. So to make them interesting again, I could do something like make them move. Or I could radically change the style of the scientific image. But what if you don't have a beautiful image like this? What if you have a really boring screenshot you're presenting or something? And you might have a really beautiful background you can throw behind it that makes it look amazing. Like this is gorgeous for one slide. But after two or three slides, you're going to get sick of the rainbow and you're just going to want the screenshot to be full screen so you can actually see what's going on in it. Sometimes you feel like you have to add a template so that you can add your company's branding or whatever, but you can add branding without adding a template like this. Now, one objection I hear to this whole don't ever use templates point is that, hey, templates are good because they reduce cognitive load by putting everything in a predictable location. And this is actually kind of true. Compared to having text scattered all over the place, being able to organize your bullet points in a consistent structure is going to be better for cognitive load. But if your slides are just bullet points of text, you have bigger problems. To avoid making your slides too repetitive, what you can do is in PowerPoint, go to View, Slide Sorter, and you can get a quick overview of your slides and where you're repeating stuff. Obviously, this deck is designed to repeat things on purpose. If I was doing this for real, I'd probably notice that this bullet point pattern repeats for too many slides. Here's another one of my slide decks. I use this to teach poster design workshops. And you can see here, there's a bunch of slides showing different poster designs and eye tracking and stuff. But right in the middle, I've got the slide that says visual hierarchy game. That's my audience interaction. So I've put the most interactive novel part of my presentation right in the middle of this repetitive part to break up the repetition with a lot of novelty. If you're interested in the science behind this effect, I couldn't really pin down an exact name for it. It kind of relates to a few effects. One of them is visual aesthetic fatigue, which this great paper covers. This effect is also, I think, related to synaptic fatigue and habituation. Now, one more bonus tip. Repetition fatigue also applies to audio. So you're probably sick of my voice. But if I change the voice? I bet you'll feel interested again.